When working with large distributed systems, one can never have too much telemetry. Hi, I'm Avzal from Confluent, and welcome to this series on monitoring and troubleshooting data streaming applications. On our agenda today is to explore the metrics exposed by the Python Kafka client. We will look at these in the context of what linger.ms does to our message latencies. To briefly touch on what linger.ms is, let's take a look at your average Kafka application. We have producers sending messages to the cluster and consumers getting messages back. From the producer's perspective, whenever the client code invokes a send, the producer puts it into a queue to be sent out. Once there, there are usually two choices. We could choose to send each message as it arrives and get the lowest possible latency, one message per request. Alternatively, we could wait a bit and batch the messages into a single request. As we can surmise, Batching messages together allows us to leverage efficiencies in compression and reduce the total number of requests made, thus improving throughput. The downside, because we kept that first message waiting for the others, the message takes longer to get there, and we get higher latencies. In Kafka, the primary tool for working with batching is a setting called linger.ms. The longer one lingers, the more messages one might be able to pack into a request, but the longer the delay to get messages there. There is another setting called batch size, but we will not look at that for now. We will run a few tests to see what happens as we vary linger.ms while we're exploring monitoring. I doubt if anyone will be surprised with the results, but I expect everyone will learn something that interests them along the way. Our technology stack today consists of Python code running in a Jupyter notebook. We will be using the Confluent Kafka Python client library. This particular one is built on the ever popular librd Kafka C library, just like the .NET and Go libraries. For our infrastructure platform, we will be using Confluent Cloud. For complete transparency, we need to collect telemetry from each of the three parts of our system, the application code, the client library, and the cluster itself. The application normally does so much more than sending Kafka messages, and we should make sure that we emit telemetry for all of its actions. A key point with metrics is that they should be events, that something happened, and not that a particular line of code was executed. The distinction between the two being that the event has additional metadata to provide context. For example, when analyzing UX on a website, we need to capture the user's entire journey across the site to provide useful feedback for optimizations, and not that a bunch of buttons were clicked on the page somewhere. Finally, although we're using a Python notebook, metrics should be published to your firm's monitoring infrastructure via standard like open telemetry. The Kafka client library uses asynchronous callbacks to provide telemetry. There is a lot of information that it can provide, and we will look at it in a bit more detail later. Finally, the Confluent Cloud Kafka cluster provides an HTTP endpoint which clients can hit to get metrics back from the cluster's perspective. It is quite extensive and allows us to get back data for a given cluster and grouped by topic or even client principle. Diving into the client library, there are two callbacks. The first is part of the actual sending of the message via the produce method and provides us with the latency for the message that was sent. Let's take a look and see how it works. Here, we are producing a single message, and the produce call has been given a lambda to print out the latency whenever it is invoked. Let's give it a run. There we go, 1.24 microseconds. The second callback is the stats callback that returns a JSON blob of metrics at a pre-configured interval. Some of the statistics returned are counters or cumulative, like TX messages, the total number of messages sent. Others are relevant for that specific callback instance, like batch size or batch count, and we need to aggregate those for overall numbers. Let's take a look and see how it works. For the stats CB callback, our implementation looks at both the cumulative counter for number of messages sent, TX messages, as well as the gauge for average count of messages in a batch, batch count. It will report every 100 milliseconds. When we run this, we can see how TX messages is a running total while batch count is for that specific callback. An important thing to note here is that the producer is asynchronous. As such, callbacks will not be invoked until we either call the poll method or the flesh method, as we saw in our code snippets. The metrics API for our Kafka cluster, as we mentioned, is available over HTTP and is documented with OpenAPI. Key things to note are that we can choose the aggregation level for the data returned either by the minute, by the hour, or even longer. We can also choose to get our data filtered or grouped by topic or principle. Grouping by principle is really useful 
For example, when we are a shared services team managing access to the Kafka cluster, and we need to provide telemetry to each team for their specific applications. Let's give it a spin. We are making an HTTP POST request with appropriate headers for authentication. In our payload, we are asking for the received records Kafka cluster metric, which is aggregated across all the brokers in the cluster. We will get values aggregated to the minute and filtered only for our cluster. Running the code, we see the messages we sent earlier in a list of timestamp and value pairs. Over here, we see we got one record that was sent during the minute and then other values that follow. Now that we have played with the snippets, let's get back to examining the effects of linger.ms on batching. You are welcome to sit back and watch. But if you want to follow along, you will need a few things. First, we need to sign up for a Confluent Cloud account. If you're watching this video on YouTube, then take a look at the description. There should be a link that will provide you with all the information you need to get up and running, along with a code to get some free Confluent Cloud credits. If you are on Confluent Developer, the details should be below this video. All of the code is in this repository on GitHub, and it includes a readme on how to get set up with the appropriate credentials. Please feel free to submit PRs with improvements, fixes, and anything else that you can think of that will be of use to others. The code itself is written in Python, so you're going to need a Python environment. If you're not familiar with Jupyter Notebooks, you can copy and run the code in your particular Python environment. Do not worry if you are not familiar with Python. You can still play with the setup by varying the parameters in the various tests. You'll see what I mean when we get to the code. Now that we have run the monitoring code in snippets, let's put it all together and see what effect linger.ms has on latencies and batching. Here, we are running the test twice, once with linger set to 0 and once with it set to 1,000 milliseconds. The testing code has been parameterized so that we can play with it with various scenarios. And in our case, it is set to one producer, 10,000 messages coming in at approximately 200 messages per second, and each message being 1k in size. Looking at the results, our test runner gets metrics from both the Kafka producer library, the L prefixes, and the Kafka cluster, the C prefixes. We find that the latencies go up when we increase linger.ms. The number of batches goes down, along with each batch being larger. All is as we expected. Let's take a look at some of these other metrics. The number of connections being made to the cluster, as reported by the cluster metric active connection count, seems to vary each time. That is a bit strange, since we're sending the same data each time. This one has to do with the definition of the metric. It is the current active connection count. So what we're seeing is the number of connections at the time the sample was taken. Had we sent more data and kept it going for a few minutes, we would have seen a consistent number of connections. Let's look at the other one. In the last row, according to the client library metrics, we sent out 10,000 messages, and 10,000 messages were received by the cluster. However, the number of requests that each is reporting is different. The cluster reports that it received fewer requests than what the client library is reporting that it sent. What are those extra requests? Did we mess up our code? Do we even know what each of these metrics are actually measuring? Very confusing. In these sorts of cases, my advice is to take a breath. Things are never as bad as you think, but are always a bit more complex than you had hoped. Let's see if we can get to the bottom of it. First, we need to turn on logging. We use Python's native logging library and pass a logger to the Kafka library. It writes out the log to a particular file. Having run our smaller test, we see that we're still getting that same inconsistency, fewer requests reported by the cluster than by the client library. Let's take a look at the log file. A lot of information here because we set the logging level to all. Having seen a few of these log files before, I know I want to look at the send messages. The first one is one that requests the API version. Then we have a security handshake request, we have authenticate requests, and then a few requests for metadata. Our discrepancy now makes sense, since the cluster would not count these as incoming data requests. This brings up a key point in metrics. We must know exactly what it is that we're measuring. If we are the creators of the metric, we should make sure that the name is unambiguous and includes the units. If we are consuming a metric or we are the users of the metric, we should make sure that our understanding of it is accurate. In our case, our assumption that the client metric TX was reporting only produce requests was not correct. This wraps up our testing. The thing to note here isn't just the earth-shattering fact that longer linger.ms gives higher latency or better batching.
but to know that how we incorporated metrics from three different sources to monitor our entire application. Our purpose is to illustrate that we need observability as well as knowledge of our streaming platform technologies to truly understand what is going on. I want to reiterate that what we are doing is ad hoc analytics. Monitoring in systems should be done in a more engineered way. We have worked with metrics and logs, but the monitoring term telemetry also includes traces, which are essentially logs with sufficient context to track an action across machines. We are in a distributed computing world, after all. In our data streaming application, telemetry is emitted not just by our client applications, but across the entire technology stack. It is emitted by our code, the client library, other services that our client uses, our streaming platform, the container or virtualization framework it is hosted on, and finally, the bare metal hardware that everything runs on. All of this telemetry is pushed into your monitoring infrastructure where it can be analyzed, visualized, and alerted on. This could be a cloud provider like New Relic, Datadog, or Splunk. It could be hosted locally with, for example, Prometheus, Grafana, and Elasticsearch. Without the transparency and insight that these provide, there is no point in building software applications. We all know that applications will catastrophically die in worst case scenarios. Or as is more common, our workload profile will evolve past what we originally designed or tuned our application for. There is no such thing as too much telemetry when your firm's very existence depends on bouncing back as quickly as possible. I'm looking at you, Knight Capital, with $440 million lost in 30 minutes. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this information useful and learned some new tech. Please feel free to share your thoughts either via YouTube comments, the feedback button on the Confluent developer site, or get in touch on the Confluent community Slack. Take care, and I'll see you on the next one.